Okay, so anybody had a crazy busy week? Yeah. I was talking to a couple of people. Last week was kind of crazy. I'm going to read a scripture to you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, is anyone, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That is probably one of my favorite scriptures. It's one of the very first Bible verses I remember that said, okay, that's me. Um, and this past month, has anybody heard about these, you know, prophecies and upcoming events? Anybody? Yeah. I've had a lot of questions. People have been coming up to me saying, hey, have you, you know, September 23rd or 24th, something big is going to happen. And everybody's kind of wondering what it might be. Um, and some people are actually a little freaked out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. Well, something really did happen on Friday, September the 24th. This life-changing event. Because does anybody know what happened? It was, everybody's expecting stuff, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what it was. Tony? Next. <laughs> the new iPhone came out. <laughs> that didn't shatter anybody's world. That didn't totally just, you know, wow, yeah, something great happened. <laughs> the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus came out. This life-changing, shattering event, right? with all the updates and the upgrades and this is faster and better and it's the more efficient whatever and the something or other that everybody's got to have, right? Well, I'm going to actually blend a couple things for you about me. Um, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about my, quote, day job. Um, some of you don't know, you know, I have a day job. Um, God's 24-7, my ministry is 24-7, thankfully, and I get to use always got it in 24-7, uh, even through this job that I have in the daytime. And in case you don't know, I work for a, a wireless company. And um, I won't say which one. I don't want to give out free advertising or anything. <laughs> um, I work for some, some okay, company. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to, don't say what it starts with. <laughs> but I, I just want to kind of tell you, because a lot of times when people find out, like, you know, who I've worked for for a while, I get a lot of questions and comments about, you know, technology and the cell service and, and um, not really overall intruding in some ways. It is kind of, sort of. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so I can be at the doctor's office and, you know, and this is a true story. I was in a doctor's office. I have a physical every year. And um, as I saw this doctor a couple of three years ago, yay, I'm trying to stay healthy. And, um, and like right in the middle, look at my chart. Oh, you work for a wireless company. <laughs> And I said, yeah, and right away it's like, well, you know, where I live, I don't get that good of cell reception. And <laughs> when are they going to put a tower over by California Park or whatever they say, you know? And I'm like, you know, <laughs> can I just take my blood pressure or something? Because <laughs> I don't really like talking about things all the time. But some reason when people hear about that. Um, so I keep inviting him over to, like, to where I work, one of the stores where I work at. I want him to come upgrade his phone and get a new phone. That way, that, that way when I'm in the middle of this transaction, I could look at him and say, you know, how come my back still hurts? You know, <laughs> you know I've got this problem with my knee. You know, just, you know, take my blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just kind of kidding about that, but I really am waiting for him to walk in one of my doors. Um, <laughs> So let me describe this Apple launch for you because it actually it's one of my busiest times of the year. I, I'm usually out at the Apple store every year for like nine years in a row working. And, um, and this is the very first year that I, got a, I was left off the list. I didn't have to go to Roseville and spend three days in a hotel and work this Apple launch. So I know God's given me favor. Yeah. <laughs> All I had to do was lock myself up in my home office, answer phones for 24 hours straight, and... <laughs> Try not to be too grumpy. Um, so, but basically, people are waiting in line. On Friday morning, they all get in line. And, and they, they go crazy for this earth-shattering event. Everybody wants to get the latest, greatest version. They want the newest iPhone. They want this, they want to upgrade. They want to change. They want it to be faster and better and do all these wonderful things that they want to do, all these new things. So they get in line. And the Apple store in Roseville is always packed. The line goes all the way around. The other one is New York. Um, I don't have to go to New York, thankfully. So, but every year, I have to go through this. And I see all of these people in line. 
and they're excited, and they're eager, and there's a buzz. And all the people that work in the Apple store, they run out, and they go, who wants donuts? You know, we got, you know, who wants your coffee? And they're trying to get these people hyped up on sugar and caffeine. <laughs> so they'll buy more, I guess. Uh, so my job is to go out there and fix all the problems and to, you know, take all the incoming issues and fix things. But they get so excited, and the lines are going around. See, but this year has been different for me. My first year as a pastor, and I'm, I'm looking at things completely different. This year, I was thinking, well, we as God's people, how awesome would it be if we got that excited to get our spiritual upgrade and to update our lives? It would be really awesome if every Sunday morning there was lines outside and there was a buzz and they all gladly run out with coffee and sugar donuts. You know, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that for you. But how awesome would it be if people would just know and they knew that they could come into God's house on a Sunday morning, be in his presence and get a spiritual upgrade to give them more information to make a, a better, improved relationship with God. If, do we eagerly allow God to upgrade us, the way we think, the way we act, the way we process information? Are we that eager and anxious to get the latest, newest? How cool would it be if that's what we saw every Sunday? Enough excitement and upgrade and changes in our life that would carry us like we were praying this morning, Monday through Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And then come back in on Sunday and carry that anticipation and that eagerness, that excitement to get your upgrade. Excited about getting to God's house. It's not that this is the only place you can get this spiritual upgrade. We can do that any day of the week. It's always there for us. I just want us to be able to have that anticipation, that excitement, because we have an opportunity to get that upgrade every single moment of our lives. Right. Every moment. A software update that changes for the better, how we think, how we act, how we talk, how we treat others, how we process things, how we react to the challenges and the tragedies and things that happen in our life, and how to be able to go through and all the victories and the good times and the wonderful things that happen as well. And to be able to delete, delete, hit the delete button <laughs> on our past and all the things that hold us back and all the things that the enemy tries to throw at us. And to tell us that we're not good enough for a software update, that we're st still stuck on version 2.0, and we can't get to version 6 where we want to be. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right, so I'm going to give you lots of scripture, so I'm going to ask you to take some notes. We want to become that latest generation, to be, in a sense, regenerated, to be able to look and say, okay, God, I I'm happy where I am right now. And I'm glad I not, I'm not where I was yesterday, but, but I want to be better tomorrow. So what do I have to do today to get there? Titus 3, 3 through 7. For ourselves, for we ourselves, we were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful, and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Amen. Through the washing of regeneration. regeneration. Amen. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. Regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that, have been, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See, God uses these words, regeneration, renewal. See, if the will of God is for us to please him and to strive every day to be better and better and reinvent ourselves and live a holy life, we can't stay the same. We can't do the same things and think we're going to be different. We have to constantly be reprocessing and process things in our life that will get us a, a new and different version every day. A version that will get us closer to God. It will get us more in touch with Jesus to let the Holy Spirit guide us more and more every day so we can be better people, treat our families better, our friends better, be able to go through trials and tribulations with still a joy and a peace that I'll make it. I'll get through these things. Yeah. Webster's Dictionary 
the definition of regeneration. An act or the process of regenerating, the state of being regenerated. And I love this, spiritual renewal or revival. Renewal or restoration of a body. Body parts, biological system like a forest after injury or as a normal process. The biblical definition of regeneration, a rebirth related to the biblical phrase, born again. Our rebirth is different than our first birth, that physical birth when we're conceived physically. And we inherited that sinful nature of the world. We have to strive to be good. It's easy to be bad. Because when the world fell, when Adam and Eve fell, we inherited this sinful nature. They have to wake up in the morning and we have to say, God, it's going to be a good day today. I'm going to overcome things. The new birth is a spiritual, holy, and heavenly birth that results in us being made alive spiritually. This happens when we place our faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew. He created us anew in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, what do we need to do to get this renewal, this regeneration, this upgrade, this update in ourselves? I'm going to go through a few things. The basics, number one, hey, we need Jesus. We can't accomplish anything without Jesus. It doesn't work that way. Most of us have tried to do things on our own for a long time, and it didn't work. We need Jesus. We have to get right with Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we have even no place to start. We're not even version point one. We're not even formed. Without Jesus, we have no hope, no future. Yeah. The second thing is Father God. That relationship with Father God and the word that he gives us. See, the operating system that we have is the word of God. We have to learn his word. We actually have to practice it and then try to apply it. We have to learn it. And we have to use the tools that it has for us. You have to ask the, ex ask the experts, like I asked Shane, Shane, how do you do this? You got to take tutorials. In other words, you got to have Bible studies. You have to get out the instruction manual and you have to start applying it so you can make these changes happen spiritually. And you even have to ask even more spiritually mature Christians to help you out. The third part about that is the Holy Spirit. That's the processor. The processor will lead you and guide you and give us the power to change when we can't do it on our own. See, God wants us to upgrade continually, to have us go through these regenerations, these upgrades, these renewals, these new and improved versions of ourselves for the purpose of having the best relationship with him possible. He loves you that much. Now, does God have specifics in his word and how we're supposed to upgrade our lives? Oh, yeah. Let me read two scriptures for you. Romans 12, 1 through 2. So, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The renewal of your mind. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct, your old version, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man which was created to God, according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. See, we can be happy with where we are today and the changes that we've made. I mean, I am. 
I, I am completely different than I was 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. And since this ministry started, I, I'm not the same person I was even a year ago. But I know I still have to strive and get better every day. I was just talking to my dad last night about things that I've been letting creep back into me because things are so busy and crazy for me right now, I don't exactly walk around with the joy of the Lord all the time. But I want to wake up tomorrow and say, okay, I, I may have stumbled a bit, but I'm going to keep moving forward. See, we can be happy where we are today, but we got to keep improving with the progress that we can make daily. It's like we need to say, God, upgrade me. Change me spiritually. Help me emotionally, mentally, physically, God. Help me, Lord. Let me be open to that upgrade, Lord. I want to be better than I was yesterday. And I want to make wiser choices today than I did yesterday. And I pray that when I wake up tomorrow, I'll be even better than I was today. We have to be humble enough, broken enough to wake up in the morning and say, God, I'm yours today. Let me please you today. So I'm going to use some technical terms. But I'll, I'll try to bring them to you spiritually. How do you get rebooted like that? How do you unplug the power source and start all over again? To get upgraded. To become the latest, greatest version of yourself that you can be. You have to let God do what God does. He creates. He creates. Number one. You've got to allow that upgrade. A spiritual new creation. You have to let God take something that was old and make it new again. And that sounds simplistic, but I'm going to tell you something. I fought for years because I never went to God and said, God, I'm broken now. I'm yours. I still try to do it on my own. I never gave God permission to change me. So you have to walk in for that upgrade. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is my Bible verse. And there's two parts to that upgrade. Number one, start. Renew your relationship with God again. Give him permission to make you that new creation. You're going to have to either start a relationship with God or you're going to have to renew it. If you haven't given yourself over to Jesus, you, that's where you start. You've got to start. And if you're just now kind of walking back into your relationship with God for whatever reason, great, great, you're starting over again. That's perfect. There's no shame in saying, you know, I've been struggling for a while and I have this need to walk back into God's house. I have this need to get together with believers again. I have this need for once in a long time to open up the Bible. That's awesome. I love that. A lot of times people walk up to me, especially the last year since I've been a pastor, they walk up to me and say, well, I haven't been to church for a while. Like if I'm going to be like, oh, well, what have you been doing? Are you kidding me? I'm going, cool. Walk in. Come in. It took me five years from leaving one church to walk back into another one. I feel you. I get it. The longer you stay away, the harder it is to walk back in. That's right. So you have to renew that relationship with God. And you have to ask yourself, okay, so what is the output or the result of my relationship with God? And what are the results of my renewed mind? What gets printed out to others? What do they see in your walk with Christ? What gets printed out from your lifestyle that represents your life as a Christian? And that's a big question you have to ask yourself because it's introspective. It's, it's self-analytical. You have to say, okay, what gets printed out of me for others to read and see? Which leads us to number two. You have to add a faster processor. You need more power. It's like that laptop I have to replace. It doesn't have enough power to play the videos and go things fast enough, do things fast enough. I want to be quicker, faster, stronger. I want to be more efficient. I need a faster processor. Romans 12.2. So then don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The renewing of your mind. 
Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. See, this is going to help you discern and recognize and process what is right and wrong. Because bluntly, what slows us down is too much world. It slows us down. It slows your processor down. It, it, it gets in the way. Your mind gets full of junk. And, and as soon as you start learning the word of God and his will for you, suddenly you start processing out all this stuff and you get to the things that you need to work on. This will help us discern so we don't waste time and we get rid of the things that aren't part of God's plan for us. We know what to stay away from and what to really press into. My wife used to say I was really naive. Wife. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong row. <laughs> wife. Um, my wife used to say I was really naive. Um, when I worked in nightclubs and stuff like that, sometimes I didn't recognize people's intentions. Uh, I was kind of naive to some of their intentions, you know, towards me or things that they were saying or doing. And my wife would say, you know, you're too nice. You have no idea what this person's trying to do or get you to do. That's because I wasn't looking through the filter of the Holy Spirit. I was looking through a very worldly filter. You know, just the nightclubs and places I used to hang out. My bad. Philippians 2.13 <laughs> For God is working in you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. There's your power. There's your processor. Right there. Allowing God to work in us. Giving us the desire and then the power to please him. This means that we're supposed to be uh, focused on the word of God. And delete. Hit that delete button in your life on anything that's ungodly. Any wrong thought. Any action that hardens our hearts. And I'll tell you something. When these thoughts come upon you, I know, okay, I got this thought. Okay, that's not right. I can delete it before I turn it into an action. All right. It's going to lead me to number three. Part of this update, part of this software internal update that we need is to remove all those bugs and viruses. These bugs and viruses that can slow us down and hurt us. Proverbs 420 to 2023. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate, penetrate deep into your heart and they bring life to those who find them and they will bring healing to your whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And what I want to focus on here is all those bugs and viruses that we let infect our lives. And by not following God's words and plans, we infect our software. We allow things to come in and infect our processor, slows us down. These bugs and these viruses that we let into our heart changes the course and the actions and the works that we're trying to do. You have to renew your mind the way you think you need a software update. In the technology world, hardware is that physical part. Software is that internal working or program that we have inside of us. Romans 8, 12 through 14. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature, nature encourages you to do or urges you to do. For if you live by what it dictates, you will die. But if you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We want to make sure that what we allow in our internal spirit is to be guided by God's Holy Spirit, not the bugs and the viruses that we let infect us. You know what happens to a computer that's been infected by so many viruses and, 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 and bugs? Shuts down. Has anybody ever heard of the blue screen of death? Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand. I got to see that. Blue screen of death. Yeah. Have you seen this? Yeah. Anybody seen this through your computer? Yeah. You know why that happens? Bugs and viruses. And do you know where you get those bugs and viruses? From visiting certain sites that maybe we shouldn't visit. Clicking on things we shouldn't click on. But not only that, we also get viruses that are sent to us. Because we don't have that virus protection. 
we don't have the software program that will protect us against these bugs and viruses. And what do you think is going to protect us from this blue screen of death? It's God's Word. It's His Holy Spirit. It's making it active in our life every day. Following the Holy Spirit will prevent you from seeing a blue screen of death every time you look in the mirror. Number four, we need to extend our battery life. This sounds weird, huh? <laughs> Proverbs 3, 1 through 3. Trusting in the Lord. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commandments in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years. Sounds like battery life, right? Yeah. And your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. We always hear that stress and worry and burdens just really tax our physical bodies. And a lot of people die from worry and stress. I'm not saying that life isn't difficult, because it is. But how we process things, that's the key. It's how we process things. If we process things with God's Word, we will bring a longer life and healing to our bodies. Following God's Word and striving to remove all those bugs and viruses and the things that will bring us down or take you out of God's plan, following God's, following God's Word will give you a longer battery life. Last one. Keep installing those latest versions. Number five. Don't click on the not now icon when you get those software update screens, right? Not now. I don't have time. I don't have time to do an upgrade right now. You need to upgrade to Windows 10. And you're scared of it because you don't know how to work it. But we got through Windows 7. We can get to Windows 10. I, that must have been an inside thing. <laughs> Shane, you feel me, Shane? Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's like uh, I, I'm much more comfortable with Windows than I am the Apple iOS software. That just frustrates me. Uh, my wife hears me scream about it every day. Um, so don't click on that Not Now button. You have to get the latest version. You have to get the latest software update. But here's the key. Be patient. Don't be discouraged if you don't know how to process or navigate through the latest program. Psalm 70, 37, Psalm 37, 23 through 24. The Lord, the Lord directs the steps of the ungodly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. So don't, don't be discouraged if you mess up a few times trying to get to that next step and try to get things just right. God's there to help you. He, in a sense, is your tech support. The Bible is your instruction manual. You can make a mistake, go back a couple pages, and start over again. Yeah. Remember, it is about the steps and the changes and the new versions, because some of your updates might not be as big or complete as others that you may encounter along the way. So be patient. Trust me. <laughs> that's, that's my job, the day thing. Just trying to be patient. Although my dad tells me sometimes, I hear you yelling in there. <laughs> so, to give you somewhat of an analogy, the iPhone 6S is actually the ninth iPhone. Oh, I thought you were back there. It's the ninth iPhone. There was the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 4S, the 5, the 5S, and the 5C. The 6, the 6S, six and probably next year there's the 7. And there's also the 6 Plus and the 6S Plus. Trust me. You're looking at Alfredo version 57.3S <laughs> Plus. <laughs> I've gone through so many versions of who I am to be where I am right now. Some updates and upgrades to the phone were not as major as others. Some were relatively minor. This version right now wasn't major enough to be called the 7. It's the 6S. But that's OK. Sometimes getting to the place where God wants you to be and getting closer to the person God wants you to be eventually, it's like that. It's a process. It's a series of steps and versions of yourself along the way 
to you becoming the person that you were meant to be. Yes. The person that God wants you to be. Some steps, you may have to stop for a while and clean up some bugs and some viruses and change your processor and the way you think, but that's okay. You're on the way. You're on the road. You're going through your versions. I'm going to end with this. Example. For me to get here right now at this point in my life, um, to be a man that really loves Jesus and striving to be the godly husband, father, friend, brother, son that I want to be, it was definitely a process. Psalm 37, like I just read, the Lord directs our steps. He delights in us. And if we stumble, we won't fall. He'll be there to catch us and hold us by the hand. I have gone through so many versions and upgrades, bugs and viruses. Sometimes I allowed, I allowed God to make these sweeping changes in me that people were instantly, wow, what happened to Alfredo? And some of them have been gradual. When I fell, it was my faith in God that allowed him to pick me up. Allowed him to pick me up instead of me waving him off. Saying, not now, click. I'll do it some other day. When I have more time. It wasn't always a problem with me. Sometimes God just told me, you weren't ready for this version yet. You can't get to version 6. You first have to become a 5S. Makes sense to me. I'll leave you a couple of things about upgrading. Not one of us, not one of us is at a place where we cannot go to God and ask Him to give us an upgrade. No matter where we are, no matter what, what we've gone through, no matter what we've done, we can always go to God and ask for the latest software version. God's grace and mercy is, each, is on each one of us. He'll never give up on you. He'll never want you to stop improving. And he will never turn you away. God will never click on the not now button. See, it's the last thing. The enemy, and I don't like talking about him too much. I don't want to give him any credit. But the enemy did not like the new and improved Alfredo. He liked the old and lousy version of Alfredo. <laughs> he didn't want me to be a new version. Trust me, my family knows about that. But the last thing, God can upgrade you, reboot you, rebuild you, recreate anyone if you just allow him to. All right. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Woo! Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, we come to you right now. And we thank you. We thank you for your word that processes, Lord. That word that we can go to and ask for that upgrade. The word that's always there for us. Your Holy Spirit that gives us the power in your son Jesus that made it possible. And right now, Lord, I want to take a few minutes, just, just a couple minutes to say, if anybody here right now, Lord, is ready for that upgrade. If anybody right now, Lord, wants to go to you and say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for an upgrade. I'm going to divide it up into two parts. If anybody is ready to say, Lord Jesus, I accept you right now. With everybody's eyes closed, please, and your head bowed, nobody looking around, raise your hand if you're ready to meet Jesus and say, Lord, it's all about you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're ready for that upgrade, no matter where you are in your relationship with God, if you're ready for an upgrade, if you're ready for that software internal update, raise your hand. With nobody looking around, eyes closed, just raise your hand. Say, Lord, I'm ready for that upgrade. I'll take version 8.0 or whatever it may be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. So say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for what you're doing. I am ready, Lord. I accept you. I ask you in my heart, Jesus, to change me, to renew me, to give me a new birth. I'm turning away from the world. I repent. Lord, I want nothing to do with that sin anymore. And I'm sorry. I apologize, Lord, for staying away. I invite your spirit into my heart and give me this upgrade that I need, God. I don't have a future without you. I want to spend eternity with you, God. 
Thank you for saving me from the blue screen of death. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to have Pastor Rick come up, but we're going to be up here with the uh, prayer team. If anybody said that prayer, you want prayer, we'll be up here for a couple minutes. Everybody else, feel free to hang around. Pastor Rick. Let's go ahead and stand, if you would, and we'll be ready to be dismissed today. By the way, we're very thankful that you all had an opportunity to celebrate open house with us last time. We are a year old now and going into our second year, ready for that new upgrade that comes along with the second year. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, first of all, we just want to thank you for the very, very strong message that you delivered through our pastor today. Thank you for helping us see the relevance of those things that exist in the world and what people clamor for and how we should be clamoring in the same manner for you. We ask you, Lord, we give you permission to come into our lives we are asking you for an upgrade in, in who we are and how we're living our lives. And with that permission, Lord, we know that you will answer that prayer and be with us and guide us through the process. Thank you again for the opportunity to be with you today, Lord, to worship you in such a strong way. And now, as we prepare to leave Rock of Life Fellowship, may God richly bless you May the light of his countenance shine upon you and give you grace, mercy, and peace, both now and forever. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the body of believers all said, Amen. Go with God. Have a great day and have a great week.